Man killed in two vehicle Manchester crash. A man succumbed to injuries he sustained in a two vehicle crash on the Winston Jones Highway in Manchester on Sunday morning. His identity has not been released by the police. Preliminary reports suggest that the crash happened in the wee hours. Firefighters say they received a call at 3.25 a.m. to respond to the crash. The circumstances that led to the accident which involved a Toyota Camry and a Toyota Hiace are still unclear. However, it is understood that the Toyota Hiace, which was delivering newspaper, was traveling uphill towards Mandeville when the collision occurred. The driver of the Toyota Camry, who was pinned to the vehicle, had to be removed by firefighters. The drivers of both vehicles were taken to hospital, where the driver of the Camry was pronounced dead and the driver of the Hiace admitted. Fire protests in Old Harbor Bay after police killing. Angry residents of Old Harbor Bay St. Catherine blocked sections of the roadway on Saturday to protest the killing of two men who they allege were gunned down in cold blood by the police. Reports were that the two men, who have since been identified as 23-year-old Nikaja Bailey and 21-year-old Daniel McKenzie, were killed sometime after 1 p.m. during a confrontation with police. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, has launched a probe into the incident. In an audio release, Indicom Commissioner said its forensics team processed the incident scene, collected the requisite exhibits, and seize the firearms involved. He said that the protesting residents and the police have given contrasting account of the incident, noting that the security forces report a firearm confrontation with armed men and the recovery of two firearms following the exchange. However, residents start to insist that the police acted unlawfully and that the men were hardworking individuals and not criminals. Residents were seen burning tires and barring security personnel from entering the community. During the protest, one woman was heard yelling, listen in the com, can come but no police can come through. One resident who spoke to reporters claimed that one of the young men was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The people then ball, Nigeria, just in at the wrong place at the wrong time. He should have never go down there with Daniel. If not, he would still be alive today, stated the resident. A Daniel them want, a him them want, them kill after Nigeria with Daniel, added the resident. Superintendent Hopton Nicholson of the St. Catherine South Police Division has appealed for a calm in the area and has urged the residents to exercise restraint and allow safe passage for security personnel. Jackson, not fussed about world record, says Hyder Fletcher, one to watch. Jamaica's two-time 200-meter world champion Sherika Jackson says her preparation for the Olympic Games in Paris has been going very well. Speaking to reporters ahead of the closing day of the Boys and Girls Athletic Championship in Kingston, Jackson shared that she was capable of running a world record but noted that it was not something that she was fixated on achieving. Preparation has been going really, really well. I can't complain. Things have been looking super in the training and I'm excited, stated Jackson. I definitely have a world record in the back of my head. If it comes, it comes. It's not then. I'm okay with it, she stated. Jackson last season targeted the 200-meter record of 21.34 seconds set in 1998 by the late American. She lowered her personal best in the 200 meter to 21.48 seconds when she comped gold in the Bucapest World Championships but ended the season shy of the world record. Although she came up short, Jackson said she took her positivities such as being helped with the ability to try again this season. Speaking about wants to watch amid the spectacles of Jamaica's junior talent at champs, Jackson said that Nastasia Fletcher of Heidel High captured her attention. I think she just moved to class too. Just watching her, she is so brave, because last year, I think she was a 400-meter champion. Just to see her become bronze medalist in the first year class 2, I think she is something great, Jackson stated. She also made the 400-meter hurdles finals, so I definitely think she was my goal pick at the championships at the Jackson, who competed in the 400-meter for most of her career before switching to the sprint double three years ago. Dr. Dixon, Heart and STA Care and Tools Programs Indicative of a Caring Government Minister of Skills and Digital Transformation, Senator Dr. Donna Morris Dixon, has pointed out that the NSTA Care and Tool Initiatives are indicative of the government responding to citizens' concerns and needs. The Heart and STA Trust will this year launch a community action for awarding engagement care initiative aimed at reaching young people who are unemployed or enrolled in a training program. 
participants will get $15,000 a month for transportation as well as $13,000 a week for lunch. And comments in April 1, successful graduates of Level 4 Trade Program of the Heart NSTA Thrust will receive a grant of $50,000 to help them acquire the tools of their trade. Graduates who are beneficiaries of the Program of Advanced through Health and Education Path and wards of the state will receive a larger grant of $75,000. The initiatives were announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness during his budget debate presentation. Speaking at the Poor Relief Department Board of Supervision Awards Ceremony, Dr. Dixon noted that the government is always listening to the people and crafting programs to assist. She stressed that the government is a caring one. Dr. Dixon added that through these programs, young people will have access to better opportunities and to no longer need to clean the nothing now gone. And this, again, is our government showing that we care. We said we were listening to people, and we've been listening. And I know for me, when I go out into many communities, I see a lot of young men. And it's nice to sit and talk with the young men and hear, why are you on the corner in the middle of the day and not at work? And they'll give me the reasons. Many of them said, you know, I want to learn a skill, but... And there was always a but. And as government, we have to listen to what comes after the but and be responsive. And the but was, I don't have the money to go to the program I want. I remember some young men telling me that they wanted to do construction and particular areas in construction. And that school was in Portmore. And so they would have to travel to Portmore to get that program, to be a part of that program. And they said, I didn't have the money for that. They also said, when I have to leave the community you know i have to think about food and food for my family and so i really want to get this skill but i can't and so when the prime minister spoke about the care initiative where heart will go into every community and find those young men's work with the mps the mayors the councillors to find those young men and say to them okay you said you don't have the bus fare well here you're gonna get fifteen thousand dollars a month towards bus fare you said you can't find the money for food, and you also need to help out your family some more. Well, guess what? Each of you are going to get $13,000 a week. So what we've said is that if you need a chance, if you need a skill, we're going to take out the things after the butt. We're going to make it easier for you. And that's how the government is showing that it is caring about the people. Today we announced the Tools for Trade initiative and what this is is that everybody once you finish level four at heart in a trade program so you doing plumbing or anything in relation to the electrician work you will get a grant of fifty thousand dollars to get your tools that you may need just to start and if you are on path or you're a ward of the state you get more, you get $75,000. And then for those who want to move into business, there is another grant of $100,000 that they could get. And I say, so often I hear the notion, you know, nothing's going on. But I do think there's a lot going on. For us to sit and listen and to develop programs like this means things are going on in our country. And as young people, what I want to say to you is that the government is constantly thinking about how we can help you because yes you need your parent and the stability but you also need some people to do some things to help you along the way trelawney officers get international building code training the trelawney municipal corporation tmc is set to commence in-house training of officers on the international building codes primarily the standards and regulations referred in the building act 2018 Chief Engineering Officer of the Corporation, Laverne Morris, told reporters that following the completion of the Train the Trainer course in January, the stage was set to start retraining planners, technical officers, and other personnel employed to municipal corporations across the island, as well as other agencies of the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development. The latest leg of the course, which began in October 2023, was available to select administrators at the ministerial level and local authorities. National Environment and Planning Agency of Jamaica Nepal, as well as the Jamaica Fire Brigade. In her report to the corporation, Mari said that the officers of the TMC Stone Planning and Roads and Work Departments will benefit from upskilling and retraining in the administration of the International Building Code, International Fire Code, International Plumbing Code, International Fuel and Gas Code, 
Caricom Residential Energy Efficiency Building Code, Private Sewage Disposal Code, and Property Maintenance Code, Electrical Code, International Mechanical Code, Small Residential Code, and Electrical Efficiency Code. Additionally, as part of the Capacity Building Program, she said that the technical officers had recently completed courses in Ethics and Professional Conduct, the Subdivision Process, Development Orders, the Processing of Strata Applications, Modification of Restrictions Convent and Application of the Building Act 2018. Officers are currently being assessed and hopefully we will start our in-house training in another week or two, she said. The courses are being conducted by the Bureau of Standards Jamaica in collaboration with the University of Technology Jamaica UTEC and the International Code Council and are aimed at educating town planners and technical officers employed to local authorities to ensure compliance with updating building codes in keeping with international standards. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.